I'm Paul, half of Dads and Dice, and today we're going to be ranking my top five Dice Throne characters. Let's get into it. As you guys know, Devin and I were introduced to Dice Throne last year through the Marvel release. And if you haven't seen any of that, click on the playlist up here to get caught up on all of our content. Also, if you haven't, please consider subscribing. It really does help our channel grow, and we truly appreciate it. Since that release, we've been slowly building up our collection of Dice Throne, getting the two character boxes. Um, we've got all, almost all of them, not all of them. Uh, so today we're going to rank the top five that I have played. Um, so unfortunately, we're not going to see Samurai, Gunslinger, Treant, or a Ninja. Uh, I just haven't come across those characters. Hopefully I get to play with them um, at some point. But without further ado, let's get into it. In the number five spot, we have Krusty Krampus. He's here to deliver bad tidings to all. Krampus's gameplay revolves around his deck of six rejects, which can be gained by his gift status token. Uh, it's his unique status effect, which can be played during the main phase to draw a card from the reject deck to be put into play. His other status effects are coal, which when given to an opponent and when they reach four, it removes all the coal from that opponent and it prevents a CP from being gained. Krampus has a 3-1-1 dice face layout, which makes some of his abilities hard to roll for. Uh, his base defense does not prevent any damage, so if you have the opportunity, try to get it upgraded early. Uh, Krampus's reject deck really makes him stand out from the other dice throne characters. I really like this mechanism that they added in that last box. In order to get the most out of him, you'll really need to manage your hand and shuffle the discards at the right time. His gameplay is completely different to the other characters that I usually go for, but honestly, I love all the thematic choices that were put into this character, and if you get the timing right, those rejects bring discomfort and pain. Up next, in the number four spot, we have the man that doesn't believe in finesse, but instead on head bashing, my man, Barbarian. He is probably the simplest character to play, and he just relies on his offensive powers. If you can inflict stun, your opponent is surely going to be frustrated when they won't be able to take any actions and then immediately will get hit with another offensive roll phase. Of course, you will always want to inflict concussion, which will make your opponent skip their income phase on their turn. Barbarian has a standard 3-2-1 dice face layout, which lets him roll for the fences with multiple fallbacks. He's going to be rolling for sixes from the get-go. If that doesn't work out, watch out for his straights. If he can get the reckless upgrade early, your opponent is in for a long one. Not only will he be able to deal tons of damage, he can also use his fortitude and his thick skin to heal back up. Barbarian is my choice for when I don't want to think too much and I just want to chuck some dice. He's super simple to play. He's a great character to introduce new players with. The reason he's in my number four spot is because sometimes I want a little more strategy for my gameplay. Next up in the number three spot, we have the Fire Master herself, Pyromancer. Pyromancer is the definition of a hothead, dealing tons of damage but not preventing any. Gaining Fire Mastery is essential to boost her damage potential. Lucky for you, every action on her board gives you the opportunity to do so. You want to apply a knockdown status effect, which is going to make your opponent pay 2 CP if they want to perform their roll phase. Your burn tokens are going to persistently deal 2 damage during the upkeep phase. And finally, if you can inflict stun, it could mean lights out for your opponent. Pyromancer has a 3-1-1 dice face layout. But unlike others, this doesn't really hinder her abilities as much since her go-to actions line up pretty well with the dice that she has. You'll be going for straights as well as pyroblasts, 
And if you can get a six early on, going for the ultimate is a good idea, since you always have the meteorite to fall back on. If you can hit combustion with your fire mastery just right, you might just watch the world burn. Just like Barbarian, she goes for broke from the get-go, but her complexity with fire mastery makes her a fun challenge to manage. In the number two spot, we have the mighty Thor. Thor's character relies heavily around Mjolnir, which you're going to be throwing and receiving from your opponents. In order to throw Mjolnir, you're going to have to either discard cards or use one of the abilities from your player board. Once Mjolnir is thrown, it is going to cause one source of damage to your opponent. Once it's on their board, you can retrieve it. Once you retrieve it, you'll be gaining Electrokinesis. Once you have three Electrokinesis on your board, you can spend them in order to draw a new card. This card can be used to either throw or retrieve Mjolnir once again, or discard it for CP like normal. His final status effect is Guard Break, which allows you to roll a die, and in a 1 through 3, it will make your attack undefendable. Thor has the standard 3-2-1 dice face layout, which makes it easy to take risks since, again, you always have some type of attack to fall back on. And for a player like me, I like taking risks, I go for broke, I just like chucking those dice. Thor takes my number two spot because he is just so well-rounded. He's a heavy hitter, which is something that I really enjoy, but he also prevents tons of damage while also inflicting more with the defensive abilities. He's a great character to introduce to new players, but he also needs a lot of strategy in order to discard those cards at the right time and just make the most out of Mjolnir. He's extremely thematic, which is a big reason why he's in my number two spot. And also, that Kickstarter exclusive hammer, chef's kiss. It's a thing of beauty. And finally, taking the number one spot for me, Black Panther. Black Panther is not only a character that deals tons of damage, he also wants to take damage. Every time Black Panther takes damage, he's going to gain kinetic energy tokens, and then for each of those, for each pair of those that he has, it's going to increase his damage by one. Once he reaches his stack limit, which can be modified by his passive ability, he's going to burst, which is going to give him two CP, two card draws, and it's going to deal five undefendable damage. If he's getting low on health, he can always throw on that vibranium suit that's going to let him prevent three damage. Black Panther has the standard 3-2-1 dice layout, which will let you have many fallback options. Triple threat and straights will be your go-tos. During your offensive roll phase, you'll want to have six to seven kinetic energy on your board in order to get the most damage while not bursting. Black Panther can both be very simple, but also very strategic, and he thrives on opponents that do isolated sources of damage. His gameplay is very straightforward, but timing is key to his success. Black Panther strikes the perfect balance of easy to play, but hard to master. Also, the fact that he's one of my favorite Marvel superheroes doesn't hurt. So that's it. Those are my top five Dice Throne characters. As you can tell, I like going for broke. And while I do like chucking dice, I do enjoy a bit of strategy in the game, which is what made some of these characters stand out a little bit more than others. Who are your top five characters? Leave a comment below, and as always, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. All that stuff really does help our channel grow. Until next time, keep rolling sixes.